You're listening to a podcast of Relatively Speaking on MPB Think Radio. To hear previous shows, visit mpbonline.org or download the MPB Public Radio app to listen on your iPhone or Android phone on demand. Good morning. This is Relatively Speaking, the show all about you and your family. I'm Dr. Susan Butters, Professor of Pediatrics at the University of Mississippi Medical Center. So this is National Bullying Prevention Month, so we're talking about that topic, bullying. It's bad for the bullied, the bully, and the bystander. So why do we have bullies, and what can be done to stop it? Certainly, bullies have been present throughout the ages, but the numbers are increasing, and it seems that social media is a major contributor in making it worse. The data is exploding with that. So today, we're not just talking about children who are bullied, but adults too. It happens in the workplace. It happens in personal situations. So... What, what I really want to talk about today is the fact that many people experiencing bullying, um, bullying at home, in the workplace, at school, and struggle with what to do with it. So we're going to talk about what we can do because there are some long-term ramifications of what happens if you don't do something about it. So listeners, have you been bullied? Are you being bullied now? Um, If you were bullied, how did you stop it? Um, If you're being bullied now, give us a call and let's talk about how maybe we can help you work through this. You you can call 1-877-MPB-RING. That's 1-877-672-7464. You can send an email to family at mpbonline.org. All right. Well, let's talk a little bit about the different types of bullying. First of all, think of bullying as sort of a type of violence. It includes three major things, unwanted aggressive behavior, a power imbalance, right? And then repetitive behavior. We really wouldn't call it bullying if if something happens once, but if it's something that is repetitive, that there's a power imbalance somehow, it could be your boss bullying you at work, or it could be a teacher um, bullying, or it just could be another individual in your social circles or in your child's social circles who, who has has taken the lead and, and taken the charge and then causing the squashing of someone else, basically. And you know, bullying can be physical, obviously. That's so very obvious, um, hitting, punching, or whatever. It can be verbal, um, where it might be calling an individual name, using racial slurs, calling attention to their sexual orientation. We know all of that happens frequently, unfortunately. Um, It can be sort of a relational thing where it is one of those things where you are excluded out of a social circle or excluded at school, you know, the the old story about the the second or third grader saying, you can't be my friend, you can't, I don't want you talking um, to my best friend or trying to exclude someone out. And then, like I mentioned earlier, the cyberbullying, um, goodness, there's so many formats to do cyberbullying now. Um, that is certainly out there. And then the, the one that we've hear, heard a lot about in the media lately is um, the prejudicial, where, you know, you, for whatever reason, are prejudiced against a certain race, a certain culture, a certain religion. I uh, can go on and on. People find all kinds of reasons to think that they're superior or that someone else doesn't belong in their space. 
Dr. Butchers, I, yeah. I had a question about the social media right now, uh, the John Gruden case, uh, the NFL coach that right. resigned um, right. because of the emails. Misogynistic, uh, homophobic comments were in his emails. You know, that, like you said, bullying can be uh, verbal, written, uh, physical, and do you think that was a form of bullying? Well, you know, it was certainly name-calling and, and the like. Now, again, if we're talking about bullying specifically, we're talking about the repetitive behavior that is typically directed at an individual um, and not a large group of individuals. That's just prejudicial behavior. Yeah, right, I mean, right. just terrible behavior right. that he clearly knew was wrong mm -hmm. because he resigned without uh, a lot of pushback. Right. He knew he had been doing something wrong and it had been um, uncovered or discovered. And so, you know, why, why do people act like that? Honestly, as I was looking at this topic again, you know, we do it every, every year, year. Mm -hmm. and it's a very important topic, Michelle. I, I believe that um, it's something that we really need to get a handle on um, because it's increasing. You know, I started looking at, at data that was available back in 2008, and it looked like bullying... Um, was occurring in, you know, oh gosh, around 10 or 12 percent. Um, now we know with data in 2020 that's out that it's much higher than that. Um, you know, upwards of 20, 20, 25 percent. And if you look at other countries back 18 years ago, um, at some of the original data, it looked like the about 10 to 15 percent of individuals, um, depending on the country. Interestingly enough, and maybe some individuals out in our listening audience have more insight into this, the United Kingdom um, said that um, bullying back in 2008 was upwards of 39%. 2008. Eight. Now I wonder what it is. That's in the United Kingdom. Kingdom, okay. Now here, back then, it was, you know, it was much lower, right. 10 to 12%, and now it's more like 20 to 25%. Now I did hear that the pandemic caused bullying percentages to go down because the kids weren't actually in the school buildings. Right. And some parents say that the, their child was being bullied in the school and being at home and doing virtual learning helped that in a sense. But you said, again, the bullying a lot of times happens on social media, uh, Instagram and Facebook. Right. And Maybe. TikTok or right, whatever right. The a TikTok, platform yeah. these kids are on Instagram, now. Instagram, yes, you know, yes. Snapchat, all of those, um, especially the ones where you can quick post and quick take comment. it down uh -huh. and, yeah, comment. Um, people think that that it's, it's okay for some reason or another. But, um, you know, the out of sight, out of mind, I wonder if the bullying diminished for a while and now with the school in, right. closures. But now when there, there's the hybrid or, you know, where there's some virtual learning and some face-to-face, -face, um, I believe there's a resurgence. And, in fact, talking to teachers, we're working with a few school districts on some telebehavioral health on a project that I'm doing and we were talking to teachers about what what topics did they really need more information on, and one of them was bullying. And when I said, oh, um, in management of bullying in the schools, and they said, no, no, we are struggling with our students who are being bullied um, remotely, they're being cyber bullied, mm -hmm. and so you know, then they come to school and they're already upset and down, and there's already that social issue going on 
that they never witnessed. And so that that makes it very tough for a good teacher who really wants to know what's going on and know about the power struggle to know how to intervene. All right. Well, I know we've got a couple of callers calling in, and so I, I just want to remind everybody that bullies out there typically are bullying for several different reasons. Um, it may be that they want to dominate others. They think they're going to improve their social status. Maybe they have low self-esteem. Um, maybe they're angry and frustrated and want to take it out on somebody else, okay? So there are numerous reasons that individuals bully. And if you think about it, the bullying is not just in the workplace, but it is... I mean, not just in schools, but it can be in the workplace. Okay, we're going to go to line one. Hey, Stephen, Hello. thanks for starting us off. Um, well, I wanted to describe something that happened to me um, all the way back to my military days. It, like you said, it's not just in childhood or, or in youth age, but even in adult age. And bullying even still was continuing in the military when I was in uh, Air Force boot camp. Mm -hmm. And and I I just always seem to be a bullying target because I pretty much kept to myself and that is a prime target quite often. Uh, but this this one guy in in the uh, uh, troop he he was bullying me with uh, just trying to get attention and laughter from the other uh, guys in the uh, boot boot camp troop, and it continued for a while and he. He would love to criticize how, how I would be doing something or pointing out that I was doing something wrong, and it kept going and going until, to my own surprise, he did it one day, and I said, well, he pointed something out that I did wrong, and I just turned and looked him right in the eye and said, well, can you show me how to do it right? When I did that, his whole attitude toward me changed the rest of the time I was in boot camp. It, it surprised me. It may have surprised him, but everyone else in there had noticed it and saw the change in him, too, when when I responded differently. Uh, before then, I was just um, ignoring him pretty much, but when, he wanted some kind of response from me, and it changed his behavior toward me. Isn't that interesting, Stephen? In your previous years of being bullied, did you did you ever try that before, or did you find that you it, you just tried to ignore it? I'm sure that that's what you were told to do as you were growing that, up. Yes, that's pretty much what I was doing all the time I was I was growing up. And there's the roughest period was in junior high because it's like a bunch of roosters trying to gain attention mm -hmm. from all the girls, and they start fighting somebody to, to pick on. But, right. but, yeah, I would just do everything I could to walk away from it, to ignore it. And those are quite often, like I said, those that try to stay to themselves usually become a target. But it's usually when they can get an audience to, to give them some laughter or some kind of response. Mm -hmm. But but I reached that adult year, and I don't know, something just clicked in me that said, do something different this time because you can't really get away from them. Right. And when I responded the way I did, I did, said it respectfully, and his whole attitude toward me changed. And, and you just don't know what's causing it, but, but I have run across uh, several bullies that I have seen. They, they have been bullied, and they're finding, when they're finding you or someone else to bully, they're finding an outlet. Right. They're, they're actually finding an outlet, and that's what I was quite often. <laughs> right, right. Well, Stephen, you brought up a great um, point that I, I want to talk just a little bit about. Um, first of all, I think sometimes we teach our children the wrong way to deal with bullying. Sometimes we, we tell them to ignore it and like you said, it really often can make you somewhat of a target. So you have to learn how to deal with it without endangering yourself, okay? one yeah. And one way, and you just demonstrated it to, the, to, to our listeners, is to turn around and look someone in the eye. Um, so many times the urge is to look downward and hunch your shoulders and act like maybe you're not going to hear them or not going to address them. But if you turn and look someone hard in the eye and do what you did, you can say something like, um, 
well, if you can do it better, show me. Um, or if you, um, you know, I was born with my eyes like this, so um, can't do much about that. But thanks for noticing, uh, you know, to come up with just a statement that acknowledges that person said something unkind and that it did not affect you. You, you, um, that way you can often diffuse a bully or, and you're absolutely right. Many of the bullies have self-esteem issues. Um, so thanks for that call and thanks for starting us out. And I bet the bullying has not occurred, um, since you learned to do that technique. That is true. It, it has been decades. <laughs> well, thank you for helping me teach our listening audience. Great job. All right. Um, should we go to our first break? Um, we're going to go on to our first break. We have some callers online. Y'all hang in there. I want to hear from you. We're talking about bullying. How do we stop it? What do we do? It occurs everywhere. I'm Dr. Susan Buttress here with Michelle McAdoo. Um, Give us a call, one eight seven seven mpb ring That's one 672 7464 We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Dr. Susan Buttress. Children grow and change so fast, it's important to help them build the strong foundations they need to help develop lifelong skills and succeed in school. Whether it's singing songs in the car or counting steps while walking to the mailbox, there are many ways to help young children learn new skills and reach new developmental milestones. Even before they can talk, babies can make connections and respond to adults' words, sounds, and facial expressions by clapping, waving, or smiling back at them. Not only is it fun, but it's important to talk, read, and sing with children. More at MississippiThrive.com. This is an MPB Think Radio podcast. Welcome back, and thanks for listening. This is Relatively Speaking, and I'm Dr. Susan Buttress here with Michelle McAdoo. We're talking about bullying, that we've got to stop it. We won't eradicate it, but we can make it better. So let's go jump back to the phones. Next is Chris in Hamilton, Alabama. Hi, Chris. Thanks for calling. Hey, how are you? Yeah, I'm doing good. Uh, thank you for having me uh... I was going to tell you my story. I worked at a hospital in northwest Alabama. This was like 15 years ago. Uh-huh. In the dietary part. The dietary part. And I was the only male in there. We had some, uh, two black ladies were over the department, and they were so sweet. I just, you know, I just loved working for them. And their food was so great, too. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, but this one girl, uh, oh, gosh, uh, I'm not going to mention her name because, I'm just not, but anyway, uh, she just just took in on me uh, from nearly the day one. Said, "You're going to do this. You're going to do that. Uh, this." And we were just kind of cat fighting all the time. So I finally said, "You know, I've had enough of this stuff." So, make a long story short, I was out on the serving line working in the cafeteria. Y'all know you work in the hospital. And right. She in the kitchen, and she started screaming at me to get in there and wash this pan that she said I left and I just I ignored her and she was just screaming I thought she was going to come up there and kill me <laughs> but our boss lady who was such a sweetheart she got her calmed down and everything and and uh, so I she said just go back to bed she said uh, she called me back she said I, I went ahead and sent the lady I just went ahead and sent her home and I, and I thought thank you so much but but I came in the back, and she called me. My boss lady called me in her office, and she said, uh, I went ahead. She had turned her notice in and was still doing this to me. She had turned her notice in mm. and still wanted to do it. Uh, but the boss lady said, uh, when she said she turned her notice in, I, I started just like, hallelujah, hallelujah. I said it like about 20 times. But 
But this girl, I mean, you know, it goes on all the time. And, you know, if you don't stand up for yourself, you got to bring it to a head some way. Yeah. When she left, and I wished her well, and she had problems with her husband and family and stuff but I, that, that she could, could do okay, but some way. But uh, anyway, that's my story, and I just had to, I had to stick it out because I needed work. I had just had, I had a catfish restaurant, and when the economy crashed, I had to close it. Yeah. Chris, I, I just wonder, did your boss not hear it? Was she being um, subversive so that nobody knew that she was doing uh, that and she'd oh, just do my, it in your ear? My boss lady knew it, but, you know, but they're, their policy was at the hospital is they would not fire anybody because they were afraid of lawsuits. Yeah. She just, she just had to put up with it. Yeah. Well, I will tell you, there is a process, and it can be hard, but the bottom line is there is a process, and human resource is supposed to have a process and you could go to them and and let them know that you are in a hostile work environment that it is bad for your emotional and mental health um, and that you need help now I I will just say Chris that um, you know for her it's likely you said she had problems at home and typically, we've already talked about that. Most people who are bullies do not have great home lives, but not all. Some are just individuals who have a bit of antisocial personality, but many have other issues going on. Doesn't matter though, because in my mind, you know, I've been I've been a boss in a workplace before. And what you have to have is a workplace where people come in and act professional. And if they don't, then their boss is supposed to ask, um, what is going on? How can I help you? What can I do to, to make you feel better and to recommend some sort of help or intervention? But you didn't have to put up with that in that environment. You shouldn't have to put up with that. And that's when I would, you know, go, if your boss is feeling unable to intervene, then to go to Human Resources and let them know. Um, and I just want our other listeners to hear that because that I, is... I, I, honest to goodness, I don't think that would have done any, any good, you know. Yeah. It was, smaller, it was kind of a smaller hospital. But yeah. I don't know if I told you, but, you know, she, uh, my boss lady called me in, you know, and uh, she said she turned her notice in, and I start, I wanted to start screaming, you know. With yeah, me. yeah, that you were so happy because your life would yeah. get better. Right, because I, I had to work. But anyway, God brought me to it. God. Well, good. Well, I'm glad. You sound like a very positive person, Chris. Hey, man, I, I am a bona fide MPB junkie. I listen to, I listen to everything. I live like 10, 10 miles from the Mississippi State Line, about 40 miles east of Tupelo. And uh, I listen to everything on MPB. I love every minute of it. Well, thank you so much, and thanks for calling. I appreciate it. All right. Well, I just want to add one more thing to that before we go to our next caller. And and that is, you know, I, I, again, to to document what's going on. And if there had been a coworker who was hearing that, it can be really helpful for one not to be a bystander, but to turn around and say, stop being mean to Chris. You know, just something simple like that. Be nice. That's rude. Why are you picking on him to call attention and let someone else know that that's happening? Sometimes can save an individual. So don't forget, don't be a bystander. Okay, we're going to go back to the phones. We have Linda, who's patiently waiting in Port Gibson. Hey, Linda, thanks for calling. Hi. Yes, uh, I don't know if the bully realizes it, but uh, when they bully, constantly bully an individual because of the problems or whatever, that bullying goes through that individual the person being bullied for life. Mm. And uh, it see hello? I'm here. Yeah. yeah. And it seems, too, that uh, it seems to be a thing of taking up for the bully. Mm. If people take up for the bully, and, uh, and it seems that uh, you just don't, uh, they, they say, well, the bully had a bad, 
experience at home. What is oh, that? yeah. But what yeah. about the person being bullied? Yeah. Oh, no, Linda, you are absolutely right. There are long-term ramifications, even health issues oh, yeah. that occur from people who have been chronically bullied. And that's why at the end of our call um, with Chris, uh, I wanted to remind everybody not to be a bystander. So if you see somebody being um, mean, hurtful, rude, name-calling, um, yeah or harassing an individual, then you should intervene. And I a hundred percent agree with you. I mean, it can cause anxiety um, in ch- yeah. children. It can cause school failure, suicidal yeah. ideation. How many, how many times do we have to hear about children who have taken their lives and adults and adults because of bullies? And, you know, we've talked a lot about even things like school shootings. And how many times has it been individuals who were chronically bullied, chronically had terrible lives, and finally just broke, just broke? And so I think our society sometimes is causing a lot of this. So, Linda, thank you. I I I I a hundred percent agree with you. We can have some insight into why people bully, but um, we can I, can I say one thing? Yeah, go ahead. A bully, well, bullies only need an amen corner. That's all they need to, so they can keep doing the same thing over and over again. And how it affected me is a. Uh, I didn't go to school a lot, and just to avoid being bullied. Right, right. Yeah. Right. That is, that's that cycle of bullying. So it's, it's a terrible thing, and we've got, we've got to find ways to stop it. All right, we're going to go to our next break. We're talking about bullying. Bill, um, hang on. Catherine um, and David. Uh, We'll be right back to take your calls. I want to hear from you about your bullying stories, maybe your recommendations. Uh, We still have open lines. You can call 1-877-MPB-RING. That's 877-672-7464. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Dr. Susan Buttress with a Mindful Minute. Children grow up so fast, before you know it, they'll be starting kindergarten. A good way to watch for school readiness is to mark developmental milestones like talking in sentences, counting, writing, and playing well with others. Positive adult-child relationships are key to helping children meet these milestones. You already have the tools you need. Talking, singing, and reading are fun ways to help children learn and thrive. One way to celebrate these special moments is to use a milestone checklist. Healthcare providers are also a great resource to help make sure your child's on the mark and ready for the next step. Examples of developmental milestones, fun family activities, and additional resources can be found at MississippiThrive.com. This is an MPB Think Radio podcast. Welcome back, and thanks for listening. This is Relatively Speaking. I'm Dr. Susan Buttress. We're talking about bullying, why it happens, who does it, and how do we make it stop. Um, Let's go on back to the phones. Catherine's been very patiently waiting in Oxford. Hi, Catherine. Hi, how are you? Great. Thanks for calling. Well, thank you for having me. I've never called in and appreciate what you're doing I've enjoyed listening to this topic, and I have two points to make. Um, One point is I think one thing that we fail to uh, acknowledge is that I believe there's also passive bullying, not being inclusive, um, ignoring people's, uh, just ignoring, ignoring 
others and not including them and and different things that's going on. I think a lot of uh, children, adolescents, and and even adults um, feel like that they don't have a voice because they're shy or they feel inadequate or have low self-esteem. I always told my daughter to look for those folks and find a way to include them. The other, the other thing that I used to tell my own child when she was growing up, and she would come home and maybe bellyache about somebody, did her, you know, just, mm-hmm. you know, how teenagers do. I would often tell her to be diagnostic and not judgmental. Sometimes people behave in a way because there's a reason behind it. Doesn't make it right. It, uh, but it might jolt your perspective in having some compassion. Now, I'm not saying anyone should accept or have compassion on what a bully or someone being um, exclusive does. But I'll, I used to always tell her, too, you can love people from a distance. And, <laughs> um, <laughs> and we, we all love people from a distance from time to time. But um, those are my two points, and I appreciate you giving me the opportunity uh, to express them. Oh, Catherine, I, I, I want to repeat one thing that you said for sure, and that is be, a, be diagnostic instead of judgmental. And I, I think that is so, that gives a, a, a person a, the ability to have a little more insight into why someone's behavior is happening the way it is. Now, uh, to Linda's point, we want to make sure that we're not condoning bullying, but at the same time, maybe understanding why it's happening. The other thing, thank you uh, for mentioning the passive bullying, because that is something that children and adults do very well. Because they would deny that it's bullying, but they may have, even in the workplace, ex- exclude someone from a conversation, make sure that they don't allow them to join in, perhaps invite everybody except that individual to lunch, um, to say, come sit with me at my desk and ignore the other individual. So, yes, passive bullying is just as hurtful. And sometimes one of those things that is really harder to intervene upon. So, you know, it almost takes that bystander again to, as you told your daughter, to look out for those people who are being excluded. Ask them to join. And if someone says, oh, I don't want, let's let's just have our group say, well, then I'm going to go sit with them. Um, All you have to do is make a few moves like that, and and that kind of behavior gets sort of diffused. So, um, and then, yes, there are people that sometimes you want to love from afar. You can love your neighbor, but you don't have to be their best friend, and sometimes (laughs) that's a better thing to do. So all of that was so good, Catherine. I had to repeat it. Thank you for calling. Thank you for what you do. Bye-bye. Bubba. All right. Um, We're going to just stay on the phones. You know, I say this on a regular basis. Our callers make this show. So thank you, callers. Let's see. I believe is Bill next? Yes. Bill from Meridian. You've been waiting a long time, too, Bill. Thanks. I haven't waited that long. Good. Okay. But uh, I wanted to call and sort of tell you a little bit about my this whole bullying topic and how I was affected as a child and as an adult. Uh, I was a small child. I grew up to be a sizable man, but I didn't start growing until I was in high school. So I was little through most of my school years. And I endured a lot of physical intimidation, bullying type Mm -hmm. things. And uh, I learned somewhere along the line to use self-deprecating humor uh, to deflect from that situation, and it usually works, but uh, it's maybe not the best tactic, Uh, but it worked for me. Uh, As I became older, I had a group of friends, and I was 
I guess I was well enough liked, but uh, I had a group of friends as I became a man who they were cracking on each other all the time. Mm-hmm. First thing out of their mouth when you saw them was going to be something, some kind of crack about you. And so I learned that uh, the best way to get along through that was to give it back as good as I got. Mm. Maybe not the best tactic again, but I sort of honed my skills so that I was sort of a devastating crackback guy. <laughs> okay. And, uh, that, I felt like I sort of exacerbated problem because when I had children, my sons, I taught them that, that A, you can always deflect by using self-deprecating humor, and if you can make someone who's bullying you laugh, then they'll pretty much leave you alone. The second thing was that uh, the way to become a devastating crackbacker is to learn how to notice things about other people that might they might not like and to use that against them. Again, Hmm. I don't feel good about this, Uh, but they learned a little too well also. Yeah. So now I'm spending my time trying to tell them to dial it back. Yeah. But they're both grown now. But the other thing that happened, uh, this was when I was in my maybe 40s. I'm 64 now. I got fed up with the cracks, constant going at each other, and first thing out of your mouth be something negative. And so finally, the mayor of the town was a friend of mine, and he uh, one day I walked in somewhere, and he said something negative, and I just turned to him and I said, look, this is extremely tiresome. This constant negative things out of everyone's mouth is just driving me down, and I'm sick of it. Yeah. So yeah. from then on, I took this tactic, which was to immediately upon seeing anyone is to praise them in some way. Praise them about the way they looked or what I heard about them or their haircut or whatever it was. Nice, Find nice. a way to be very positive with them right off the bat and that seemed to probably be the best tactic that yeah. i that i ever adopted oh i'm so happy you ended your story with that that's wonderful bill because it is a slippery slope to to start cracking back um to people because it creates a somewhat unkind environment and and there may be somebody out there when when you take that defensive stance who who it really um can be devastating too because it sounds like you you sort of circle the wagons and that was sort of your immediate response with everybody um but how wonderful it is that you you turned it around and that you learned to say something positive. Again, like I believe it was our first caller, you know, turn around, look somebody in the eye, say something. It doesn't, it, it doesn't have to be confrontational. It can be nice. Look them in the eye and say, oh, that was such a good smile on your face. I've said this on the radio before I'll never forget it an individual um, I was walking down the hallway at the hospital and a woman was walking toward me and I just looked at her and I smiled and I said hello how are you and she stopped me and said thank you so much for that smile I was having a really down day and it was nice for somebody to acknowledge me Sometimes that's all it takes. And so keep keep in mind um, exactly what Bill did. I think that's a great idea. So thanks, Bill, for that. All right. Um, let's stay on the phones. Our next caller is David in Philadelphia. Hi, David. Uh, yes. Uh, I've been bullied three times in my life, and uh, none of them are nice. 
first time I was 13 years old, walking down the street, and two police officers grabbed me and roughhoused me up against the uh, Rothenburg building in Meridian, Mississippi, put handcuffs on me and took me to jail. I was 13 years old, and my dad had been in the military, and everybody cut their hair short back then. So uh, that's the first time uh, I, I, wow. <laughs> I'd been discriminated against. The second time, uh, I used to smoke weed. And uh, the police officer handcuffed me, threw me on the ground, kicked me, and uh, I stayed in the hospital for two days because I had, it kicked me in the liver, and the liver had caused uh, jaundice, hepatitis. Yeah. And the uh, in ten days ago, I think it was the, it was the third on Sunday, I was going through Collinsville, and it was raining, and Highway Patrol got behind and tailgated me till I had a wreck. He ran in the back of my car on the left hand side, messed it up real bad. But that wasn't a bad thing. The bad thing was, was I wasn't hurt that much. But the bad thing was, he walked around the vehicle after having the accident and started using a lot of foul language, which I can't see on the radio. Huh. He called me a stupid idiot. I'm sorry, David. It sounds like you have had some issues with law enforcement, and I'm not sure why that repeatedly is happening. Um, And, you know, I wonder if there's some other circumstance of perhaps driving or something that's going on, because that those are incidents that that are troublesome. And we know that just like every doctor is not a great doctor, every law enforcement official is not a great law enforcement official official but for you to have three different run-ins i i wonder if there is something else going on so i'm sorry that's occurring david but you might want to double check make sure your vehicle is of good repair that your license is what it should be your tag and that you're driving appropriately because that's curious that that happens so many times okay we're going to go to our final break and when we get back we have annette Craig, and I can't see who our other caller is, but we will get to you. We'll be right back. The entire foundation of your child's brain is being built in the first five years of life. This construction is strengthened through the child's interactions with others. Hi, I'm Dr. Susan Buttress. The good news is you have what it takes to be a brain builder. Learn more at MississippiThrive.com. This is an MPB Think Radio podcast. Welcome back. This is Relatively Speaking. I'm Dr. Susan Buttress, and today we're talking about bullying. And we are going to go right on back to the phone so we can get to our callers. Annette in Gaucher. Hi, Annette. Uh, hello. I'm so um, thrilled that you're doing this. Um, <laughs> this is, um, I worked in the Los Angeles County High School System, and out there they had uh, peer approval groups. And, uh, of course, this was led by the counselors but uh, who would oversee the peer groups. But um, uh, children, teens with these difficulties would make appointments and appear before their peers and, of course, the counseling staff. And then they would get to discuss these bullying situations. And so, therefore, it was, you know, um, oh, they tried to also get leadership from the different subcultures to participate in the peer approval uh, panels, uh-huh. and therefore each subculture had one or two persons they knew personally who would be listening to their situation, you know, mm-hmm. uh, who would be in the group. And so that worked really, really well out there. Also, I have heard, and I have not purchased it yet, but I plan to in the near future, uh, it's called Character First Education. And this was originally done 
by a man to help an industry for bullying that goes on in industry or to help, mm-hmm. you know, staff work well together. Mm-hmm. Uh, anyway, um, it became so popular in industry that now he has curriculum K through 12 for schools. And um, he is now going to offer that in the near future online for free. Wow. Because of COVID. So I would encourage uh, you and your listeners to look in your computer and find Character First Education. And then, of course, it's uh, printed for the different age levels. But uh, uh, I do have one man here on the coast who works in the Harrison County Sheriff's Department in their counseling uh, area. And he's a deputy sheriff. Um, uh, His name is Frank um, Lincoln. But anyway, he has been teaching this character first education for years, K through 12 in the Harrison County school system. Uh The Sheriff's Department has statistics showing how the anti-drugs, anti-bullying, and anti-suicide has gone down in every school in Harrison County since they have put this character first education into their school system through the sheriff's department. Okay, Annette, we will definitely put that on our on our oh, website oh, um, on our podcast. Um, right. Yeah. You also, tell me who I, I do have children here in Jackson County um, who are suicidal, elementary age up through middle and high school, suicidal due to bullying yeah. in three of, uh, three of the different schools. I was wondering if you have a list on your website of people uh, who teach uh, private or group counseling. We actually um, recently did a show on suicide prevention, Annette, and um, we have a podcast and have a great deal of information on our podcast. So if you go to Relatively Speaking and search our podcast list, it, it will be there and it has all of that information on it. Relatively so, Speaking. Uh-huh. Okay, that would be the podcast. Yeah. But do you have a list uh, of, of persons that you may have worked with or you could access? We can you know, certainly access. get that to you, yes. We can... Um, yeah, if you email family at mpbonline.org, um, we can uh, certainly get that to you, okay? I'm saying family, and I don't understand when you're saying the letters. Family at? mpbonline.org. M-P-B. Okay. I know I say it fast. Right. Uh, all right, Annette, I'm trying to get to our last two callers. Um, so thank you so much for that information. We really appreciate it. All right, Craig and Balexi. Yes, uh, hello. Uh, first, I want to say I am not an expert in all this, but I have had to deal with different. I went to a different school every year and had to deal with a new set of bullies every year. Uh, if you are physically active, you can uh, eliminate many of the negative effects of of the feelings you get when someone picks on you. Uh, and and then after I got out of school, I started karate right away, and that got rid of all the fear. And now I have a zero tolerance. If someone looks at me wrong, I will confront them. I do not attack people, but you have to be ready to defend yourself, Mm -hmm. in my opinion. Mm -hmm. And, you know, probably, I will say, Craig, your your karate probably gave you the discipline and the confidence to feel empowered so that you could turn around and look at someone and make sure that they knew that you were not Afraid, And that's one of the biggest pieces that people have to remember is to have confidence, to to be able to gain the confidence, you have to look like you have confidence. I will also say your comment on exercise is absolutely right. Um, Being able to 
exercise um, helps with everything, with your mood, with your physical uh, state of being. So thanks for that. And TR, I am so sorry we couldn't get you in, but um, give us a call next week. Uh, we really appreciate it. You can listen to our podcast by searching Southern Remedy, Relatively Speaking. This show is a production of MPB Think Radio, engineered by Michelle McAdoo. I'm Dr. Susan Buttress. I hope you'll join us next Tuesday at 11 for Relatively Speaking and that you'll stay tuned for NPR's Here and Now, coming up next right here on MPB Think Radio.